We've talked about so many rich people, but some of them really are on the next level. And you'll be amazed to see their insane and lavish lifestyle. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Best of Best Z. Today, we'll talk about how the Saudi Crown Prince spends $18 billion. So without further ado, let's get started. Mohammed bin Salman, the Crown Prince of Saudi Arabia, runs the country as if he were the monarch, but he does not have that title. Even though his father, King Salman bin Abdulaziz, is the official leader of the Gulf state, it is his oldest son who is in charge and makes the important decisions. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman is in charge of the Defense Ministry, the Central Bank, the Council for Economic and Development Affairs, the state-owned oil company Saudi Aramco, and the country's growing sovereign wealth fund. And since his 81-year-old father's health is getting worse, there are rumors that a path-clearing abdication could happen by the end of the year. Basically, he is the owner of all this money, and he does have his favorite ways to spend it. Everyone knows that Prince Mohammed likes to spend a lot of money. He just bought a $500 million yacht, a $300 million French chateau, and a $450 million painting by Leonardo da Vinci. There are about 15,000 people in the Saudi royal family, and their total wealth is thought to be between $800 billion and $1.4 trillion, according to one estimate. Saudi Aramco is a huge oil company that is owned by the government. When it went public in December 2019, it became the most valuable company in the world. It is part of the royal family's empire. While on vacation in the south of France in late 2016, Prince Mohammed is said to have seen the 440-foot-long yacht named Serene and put $500 million into it. He then named it after himself. He bought it from a Russian billionaire. But the billionaire moved out the day after the deal was made. The ship has three swimming pools, two helipads, an indoor climbing wall, and a fully equipped spa. But Prince Mohammed bought it anyway even though he was trying to get strict austerity measures passed at home. These measures included cutting spending by a lot and putting a hold on new government contracts. This kind of spending is often used to make people feel better. In his writing, Rydell called the yacht a floating palace because it was longer than a football field and had a lot of nice things. Besides that, it could be used as a way out. Forbes says that the Italian shipyard Fincantieri built the world's first superyacht, which was later ranked as one of the three largest boats in the world. It was third in length compared to Roman Abramovich's 550-foot-long Eclipse and steel magnet Viktor Rashikov's 459-foot Ocean Victory. Let's look more closely at what makes the serene superyacht so appealing and why it caught the eye of the Saudi prince, who already has everything you can think of. The Serene is a ship that is hard to beat because it has a lot of eye-catching features and a long list of amenities that never seems to end. The ship's 4,500 square meters of interior space are spread out over seven decks. They were designed by Pascal Raymond of Raymond Langton Design. The ship is huge with a 60-foot beam. Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman owns a French chateau that is thought to be the most expensive home in the world. This was just recently found out. It would be the latest in a long line of expensive purchases by the powerful prince, who has been fighting corruption in every way possible. The prince would be $300 million or 275 million euros to buy the huge piece of land west of Paris. Saudi officials haven't said anything about the report, which comes after a French investigative website called Mediapart made similar claims in July that pointed to the prince as the owner of the company. Fortune magazine said that when the Chateau Louis XIV was sold in 2015, it broke records to become the most expensive home in the world. The house has a lot of high-tech features, like fountains that can be controlled by an iPhone. The outside of the mansion is made to look like a 17th century chateau, like the nearby Palace of Versailles. However, it is actually a new build that was put up after the original 19th century property was torn down to make room for the new building. It looks old from the outside, but it has modern features like a movie theater, a luxurious swimming pool, and a moat with a clear underwater chamber where guests can watch koi carp swim by. The ceilings and walls of the mansion are covered in gold leaf and frescoes, and the outside has a maze, 
beautifully landscaped gardens, and huge fountains. As a result of the prince's anti-corruption campaign, dozens of princes, ministers, and business tycoons were held in Riyadh's five-star Ritz-Carlton Hotel. The report came out after the prince put these people in jail. The anonymous phone bid that won the auction at Christie's in New York on November 15th was placed with the help of a Christie's employee. In a previous article from the New York Times, it was said that documents showed that the winning bid came from another member of the royal family. Prince Bader bin Abdullah bin Mohammed bin Farhan Al Saud. But people who work in the intelligence community say that Bader was just acting as the Crown Prince's agent. A wealthy and powerful member of the royal family of Saudi Arabia buying a piece of art wouldn't usually get much attention in the art world. But there was something interesting about when this deal was made. It happened less than two weeks after Crown Prince Mohammed started an anti-corruption campaign in which he detained more than 200 Saudi businessmen, officials, and princes. Most of them are being held in Riyadh, the capital city, in a five-star hotel. The true identity of the buyer became a bit of a guessing game in the end. Even the people in charge at Christie's weren't sure who the person was. The day before the auction, Prince Bader finally let everyone know that he would be bidding. At that time, he was able to bid because he had put down a deposit of $100 million. Christie's put a lot of pressure on him to tell them his name and where his money came from. The prince replied that he had made his money in real estate and that he was just one of about 5,000 princes in Saudi Arabia. And on top of that, he has made a big difference in the growth of his country. Mohammed has been talking about how changes are being made to improve the image of his government both at home and abroad. Some of these rules limit the power of the religious police, while others improve the rights of women. For example, in 2018, women will be allowed to drive for the first time. And in 2019, the male guardianship system will be weakened. During his rule, a female singer gave the first public concert in Saudi Arabia, the country's first sports stadium that let women in open. More women got jobs, and the country became more open to tourists from other countries by putting in place an e-visa system that lets foreigners apply for and get visas online. The Saudi Vision 2030 program aims to diversify the Saudi economy by investing in areas other than oil, like technology and tourism, by the year 2030. The discovery of Saudi Arabia's huge oil reserve 75 years ago completely changed the country's economy and made the House of Saud the richest family on the entire planet. Most of the money that the monarchy uses to run the country comes from these reserves. The House of Saud says that the $1.4 trillion in wealth belongs to them and is shared by 15,000 members of the royal family. These people live in palaces that are very nice. The huge income of the royal family comes from the state-owned oil company Saudi Aramco which is always ranked as one of the most valuable and profitable companies in the world. The family is known for having an enviable way of life, which has been harshly criticized many times for being wasteful and full of haughtiness. But the family continues to live a life that is something to be admired. That's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a comment and comment down your thoughts below. Please subscribe to the channel. It'll help us out. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you next time.